What's going on guys, it's Joe Farewell with Tactical Hive and today we're gonna take you through shooting one-handed in competition and where that might apply and why it's so important that you're very proficient at it. And now in the competitions that I shoot, which is primarily three gun and USPSA, there are a few times where shooting one-handed is really important. In USPSA particularly, they will often have classifier stages or stages that are dictated that require you to shoot strong hand and or weak hand. And this is something that can absolutely set you apart as a shooter because if you're not comfortable with it, it's a stage that's gonna freak you out and you're not gonna be doing very well on. But if it's a stage that you are comfortable or a skill set that you are comfortable with, a lot of times this is gonna give you the opportunity to take a step ahead of people who aren't comfortable with that situation. So how do we become comfortable with it? Well, we want good technique first and foremost. So the first thing I wanna do is I still wanna activate a good draw stroke on the timer. And that means that if I'm doing a static drill like a classifier of some sort in USPSA or IDPA, IPSC, anything like that, I wanna go ahead and still act, do a, a good efficient draw which means I'm still moving my hands in the same way that I normally would be for a normal draw stroke, but I'm going to come up and I want to just simply keep my hand here in, in my center line versus building my grip up. One thing that's important with this is we don't let this left hand or our support hand just flop around. If we're shooting strong handed, we don't want that support hand just to flop around. So have contact somewhere. I like to have it typically here in the middle of my chest. I'll create this draw stroke. I'll build a good natural point of aim and still make sure that I'm doing the good fundamentals of trigger control, getting a good sight picture and effectively rocking that recoil back down onto target as soon as possible. The second part of this is to not outrun yourself. You wanna make sure that you're doing what you need to do to see your sights on every shot and make sure that you're effectively running the trigger so you're not gonna throw those rounds. Now, I will tell you, if you don't practice this, it is a challenge because it's more difficult than doing it with two hands. Every little influence of your trigger will affect the sight. So we wanna make sure we're working that trigger effectively. So here's what it's gonna look like, just simply shooting strong hand and weak hand in a quick little drill that's gonna help you perfect this over time. Now this is a very simple drill, it's six rounds total if you don't miss, but it's working a plate rack and you can use this on any number of targets, but very simple, we're just gonna come up, shoot three rounds strong hand, making sure we have good form, good grip and good recoil control while getting our hits, transition to support hand and shoot three rounds. And a quick tip for you guys, anytime that I'm shooting in a row of targets, if I'm shooting a plate rack, for instance, strong hand, right hand, I should say, I'm gonna work on the right side of the plate because what happens is, is the recoil is going to carry me over to the next plate. If I'm shooting with my support hand, my left hand in this case, I'm gonna start on the left side of the plate rack and work the opposite direction because again, that recoil is gonna carry me over to the right. So let's go ahead and run this drill and see what it looks like in real time. Stand by. So as you can see there, it's a very simple drill, not a whole lot going on, but it still requires a lot of finesse, working the trigger, making sure you've got a good grip, making sure you're getting good recoil control, and applying the fundamentals of accuracy across the board. So let's look at what happens when we take this into a three gun roll. A lot of times when we're shooting three gun, stages will dictate that you carry something in your support hand or your strong hand, but typically your support hand, and it's typically not light. So in this situation, one of the most common things I see is an ammo can filled with rocks. And shooting with an ammo can filled with rocks is less than ideal, but it's still doable. And it doesn't change anything about the process that we use for drawing the pistol or anything like that. We still wanna have a good draw, we still wanna have a good grip, we still wanna work good recoil control and good accuracy. However, when we have a situation such as a malfunction or a reload, that's where things can get a little bit tricky. Most of the time what I see is a major penalty if you set this thing down during the stage. So how do we manage that? How do we get around taking a penalty while still clearing a malfunction or doing a reload? Well, here's how I like to do it. If we're shooting one-handed and I have some sort of a malfunction or I go to a slide lock reload or something like that, what I will do is I will either reinsert into the holster and do my reload here, or I will simply work the malfunction off of my belt. Now this is important that you make sure you're keeping it down range so that you're not breaking the 180 degree plane and you're not getting sent home early due to a DQ. But this is the process that I would use. If we're coming up here, we're taking shots, something's not working, I'm gonna take my finger off the trigger, rotate my hip 
towards the downrange direction and then rack this off of my holster to make sure that I can get this clear. If everything else fails, we gotta set this down. We can do that, but we wanna avoid it if possible. So here's what that's gonna look like. All right guys, so I know that's not like a super in-depth analysis of how to shoot one-handed, but I hope that gives you a couple of things to work on. A simple drill to run, and just things to think about when you're planning your next three-gun match where they got you carrying all kinds of crap. I hope you enjoyed that video. Stay tuned for more stuff from Tactical Hive. I'm Joe Farewell, and I'll see you all on the range.